Welcome to Across the Goal Line, a sports podcast brought to you by Die Hard Fans. And today we have a loaded show for you. We have the race from Dover this Sunday that cut the field in the chase down to 12. Also, we have previews for the NHL season, the MLB playoffs, and WWE No Mercy. And finally, we have our weekly football recaps and picks for the NFL and college football. And as I said, this is a loaded show today, so let's not waste any more time and get things started with our NASCAR result from Dover. And for that, kick it over to Luke. Yeah, uh, as Corey said, it was at Dover. Martin Truex won a second race of the chase already in just three races. Uh, the round of 16 is over, and the four drivers uh, that did not make uh, the next round, um, which is the round of 12, which starts this weekend at Charlotte, are Tony Stewart, who is retiring at the end of the season. Uh, Kyle Larson, Jamie McMurray, and Chris Boucher, who really snuck into the chase with that win at Pocono back uh, back at the end of July, early August. As Corey said, and I've both said, both of us have said, excuse me, um, the round of 12 starts this weekend at Charlotte Motor Speedway, actually on Saturday night. Uh, they like their night races at uh, Charlotte. The one in the spring is on a Sunday night, uh, right before Memorial Day, and then they're going to compete with some college football, which there's a lot of good college football games again this weekend, which we'll get to here in a little bit. Um, so we'll be competing with that. The race is Saturday night. Um, and the drivers that will race uh, to get one step closer to claiming the 2016 Sprint Cup Championship are Martin Truex Jr., who is coming off uh, another win. As I said, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, Matt Kenseth, Joey Logano, Chase Elliott, Brad Keselowski, Kurt Busch, Denny Hamlin, Carl Edwards, Jimmy Johnson, and Austin Dillon. Round of 12 is Charlotte, Kansas, and Talladega before they cut the field down to eight and then four, and then they'll have a champion um, come uh, November, really in a month, uh, a month and a week, uh, right before Thanksgiving. I've said that a couple times uh, recently. Uh, I don't think we picked a winner last week. Did not. Um, because I was so excited about telling my story about meeting uh, The Miz and how awesome it was. No pun intended again. Um, and if you missed it, go, please go back and listen to it. Um, it's right at the beginning, so it won't take up much of your time. Right in the first five to ten minutes. Um, we will pick winners this week, though. And uh, I'm going to pick Kyle Bush. As much as I hate him... Um, I think he's uh, destined for a win. He hasn't won in a while. Um, for the Sprint Cup, I know he's won on the um, was it the Nationwide Series or the Xfinity Series. Um, I still call the Sprint Cup Series the Bush Series. Or no, the Winston Cup Series, excuse me. The Bush Series is the old nation, Nationwide and Xfinity Series. So um, I get things mis- mixed up a lot. Um, Corey, who are you going to pick? Well, I did. I had a pick ready for last week, and you did. I I'm, did. I'm totally to sorry to about it. that. It's okay. It's it's, per, it's actually the first time I was really ready for a pick there, but uh, <laughs> I think I'll stick with that. I'm going to pick the guy that I was going to pick. I had Matt Kenseth winning it over last All week, right. so I'll stick with Matt Kenseth for this week. Just kind of carry it over to this week, I guess. Sounds so. good. Um, next, we have hockey. Yes, um, we have our NHL preview coming yeah. up for the NHL season. Let's get into Kicking that right off now. Next week, actually. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Already, it's hard to believe. It's yeah. you know the middle of October already. We're you know uh, six weeks in the college football, five weeks in the NFL, and hockey starting next week. As you said, the NBA is going to be starting. College basketball is going to be starting next month. We're going to have Thanksgiving here coming up around the corner, and then Christmas, and then hell, it's going to be 2017 before we know it. Yeah, NBA gets kicked off. They have preseason starting now. And they'll be here at the end of the month. NBA will be starting. And we'll be doing a preview for that, and I believe in two weeks. A couple weeks' time, yes, we will. Just for the start of the season, like we are doing for the NHL. It starts next week. Uh, I'm not quite sure if it's the first game. I know it's the first game I'll be watching because it's my Flyers. They play on next Wednesday now on the 12th in Anaheim, which I'm kind of upset about because they start the they actually start the season on a road trip out west, which I kind of find very shocking, especially. Yeah, you you're telling me team. about that. Um, I've been. T- I think back I've told when you about the, that back right? when the schedules came out. Yes. Um. Or back whenever we were talking about the NHL draft, I believe it was back in June, because the schedules have yeah. been out for a while. Yeah, because they um, start in Anaheim, and then I think they play like L.A. a couple of days later or something. Yeah. So like. Yeah, I know the. You said you don't know if it was actually the first game, but it's the first game you'll be watching. I yeah. know the first game of the hockey season is next Wednesday, uh, yeah. October twelfth. Okay, so, I mean, I just I just know that one because of course. It's my team, so yeah. I'm up on that. I watch. Yeah. I don't exactly watch them. I listen to them on the radio. 
their radio station in Philadelphia. You can get I can listen on iHeart Radio or on their website. Well, it's because we don't get Philadelphia Flyer games around here. We get uh, yeah our, Pittsburgh Penguin games. For our hockey. local sports team is um, our local sports station is Pittsburgh. Team. Yeah, Root Sports. Now, if you lived and... lived uh, past over over past State College, yeah, you probably um, get you know down in Lewistown, Bloomsburg area. Uh, you probably would get some, you know, Flyers games. Yeah, every once in a while. Yeah, we're a little closer to Pittsburgh. We're not. We it's we call it Central PA, but we're not like dead center or anything. You know. Yeah. So, we know what we're talking about. Yeah, it's more of a personal thing we're talking about. So, not anyways. Long, yes. Hockey preview. Hockey preview. We're gonna go through. I guess we'll go through the divisions, the four divisions. Pick our three, the top three that will actually make it. And then our two wild card teams. After that, we'll start in the East. We'll start with the Metropolitan because that's where our teams reside, the right. Flyers and the Penguins. It's also going to be like the easiest one we pick anyway because obviously we're going to have our teams in there, right? I mean, I do. I have the Flyers as a wild card team, just to let you know, actually. Mm-hmm. But the three teams from the Metropolitan, I have last year's President Cup trophy winner, the Capitals, the Stanley Cup champions reigning, the Penguins, and the Rangers at the the three teams that will automatically make it not buying for wild card in the Metropolitan, the top three teams. All right, in the Metro, I have... My Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, I have your Philadelphia Flyers. And then I have uh, written down here uh, the New York Rangers. But I think I'm going to switch it with the one wild card team I have. And I'm going to put the uh, Washington Capitals in the Metro uh, Metropolitan there. And then I'm going to switch um, switch them and have the Rangers as one of my wild card teams. All right. Out in the Atlantic, I have actually the three the same three teams that made it last year. As the three teams this year as well, the Panthers, the Lightning, and the Red Wings all making it again. They have maintained pretty much all their, pretty much everyone on the roster from last year. And Detroit especially got a couple extra guys. They got Franz Nielsen and Thomas Vanek, Nielsen from New York Islanders, and then Vanek from Minnesota to add to their roster. So they've gotten even better despite losing Pavel Dotsuk over the off season. But they'll they'll remain good. But uh, either way, those are the three teams for Atlantic for me. Okay, for the Atlantic, I'm going to go with two of those three teams uh, from last year and for what you have uh, this season. Um, that's the Detroit Red Wings and the Tampa Bay Lightning. The third team will be the Boston Bruins, in my opinion. And then um, the other wild card team for the East, I'm going to have the Carolina Hurricanes um, make the playoffs. They really haven't been uh, you know, that good. Uh, in recent years, uh, the one Stahl brother was playing for him there for a while. I think he's still down there. I could be mistaken. You um, might have to back me up on this. I know he was a free agent. They're going to re-sign him or let him go, or they might have traded him. I think they trade. Didn't they trade him at the be who, deadline last year? Which Stahl is it? Jordan or Eric? It's. I think it's Eric. Eric. I think he went to New York. The Rangers. One of them did. I think it's Eric. I think he was playing in Carolina for the Hurricanes there, and they traded him for trade him. I know to one New of them York. was. I think he went to New York, the the Rangers, obviously. But as I already said, they really haven't been good, you know, since they have like, been good. Um, they did win the Cup back in '06. Yes, that's what I was about to say. Ago, but that was really like the last time uh, Carolina was they were a in the force hunt. in the East because yeah. you know after that you know Pittsburgh got Crosby and Washington yeah. got Ovechkin. And tides, yes. the tides turn there a little bit because Pittsburgh wasn't that good um, for about 10 to 15 years after losing uh, Mario Lemieux. So, oh, after them winning their first cup, excuse me. So, um, you, you know what I'm saying, Corey. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Carolina really hasn't been good, but I think they make the playoffs um, this year as a wild card. They were in the hunt for a little bit last year before falling off towards the end. My two wildcard teams are, well, I'll just say this. I have all the same teams that made it last year in the same positions, actually, pretty much. Because I have the Islanders and the Flyers as wildcard teams. Did you just copy, uh, what, the standing of the no. playoffs were last year? No, the thing like, is, like, with hockey, it not seems like... Not thought into it. Well, the same teams pretty much make it almost every year for the most it's part. It's true. It's true. You might have for, one or two teams. For, like, know, four or five, like, yeah. even more years than that. But you have the same core teams making it every year. Uh, the Flyers, I can see coming out, honestly. just They're a young team building now. They weren't supposed to make the playoffs last year. At least, it, in theory, they weren't supposed to. But they got hot. They brought up Shane Gossespierre as a rookie. He kind of ignited the team when he came in in uh, November, in a November game last year, middle of November. Sparked them, came 
uh, a rookie of the year candidate in the end, I think came third in voting to back behind Artemi Panarin for Chicago and then McDavid for the Oilers. Um, but he came in, sparked the team, really ignited our power play, especially because we had a guy, Jakob Voracek, one of our star players. He didn't play as well as he was the year prior. Then we paid him. Then he didn't play well last year exactly. Not He, didn't, he scored like seven goals or something like that. And he didn't really do much. But a team that I can see going in instead of the Flyers would be Montreal, the Canadians. They started really great last season. Undefe- was like the last undefeated team in hockey, which doesn't really mean anything exactly because hockey's not exactly a sport where you think of undefeateds or anything, much like baseball or basketball. You don't think of undefeated teams. That no. don't really mean as much because normally football because yeah, there's football. there's less games. There's less games plus like there's an unpredictability about like baseball or hockey. Yes, it's like no, no team one run games and stuff, one goal games, stuff like that. No team in Major League Baseball will go 162 and 0. Believe me, it's because never going to happen. You can have a bad day or something. And speaking of football, well, yeah, yeah, you can have a bad day. I was just watching uh, Sports Center last night with Scott Van Pelt, and they were talking about you know the over under wins uh, for the season, uh, and one team was the New York Yankees, and the game was back in the end of June against the Texas Rangers, who are in the playoffs. We'll get to baseball here in a minute. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, it's getting a little cold outside. I might be getting sick. I don't know. Um, it was a game. The Yankees were playing the Ranger, the Rangers at home, and it was in the uh, top of the ninth, and uh, started pouring down rain. And then they had that three and a half hour rain delay, and the game didn't get over till two thirty in the morning. And the Yankees were up too, by the way, when this rain delay happened. And uh, the Rangers ended up coming back, and the game got over at quarter three in the morning. And the Yankees finished with 84 wins. And the over-under on the season was 85. So just just an example there, too. And then you're saying, too, um, you know, with other sports, you, you, know, you can't go football. You can't go – you can go – I said you can go undefeated in football. You can't with other sports. And you said it's um, – some most of the time you have the same, uh, same teams uh, making the playoffs uh, year in and year out. Well, speaking of football, we were talking about this a little bit ago, and we've talked about it for years on end because it seems like it happens every year, and it's with your you know, New Orleans Saints and their division, the NFC South. The, there's always a different winner, it seems like, every single year. Um, the Falcons are hot right now. The Panthers are down after you know winning the division last year. So I just wanted to throw that in there before I forgot. Um, I know I'm getting a little off topic there, but I um, figured I'd throw it in before I forgot. Yeah, but the Canadians, going back to them, uh, they really did start really good last year, and then they kind of slumped at the end. Carey Price, I think, got hurt or wasn't playing very well. He looked great in the World Cup of Hockey here that we're going to discuss next week, uh, playing for the Canadian the Canadian team, yeah. Uh, it kind of confused me there, because he plays for the Canadians, Yeah, he plays for the Canadian team. It's like, a little tongue cluster. Well, more of like Somewhat. A, more of like it confused me for a brief moment. Yeah, cause I'm like, yeah but... He's he'll be back. He looks looked great during the World Cup there. Also, they traded for Shea Weber from Nashville. Traded their I other star that. defenseman PK Subban. I remember to that Nashville we, got we, Shea uh, Weber now. We broke that news here on the uh, yes. across the line. I remember when I uh, found that out. We were both. I was shocked, and I didn't even tell you. I just read it, and then you were. Uh, you were really shocked. I remember uh, because they're both their, star defensemen for yeah, their exactly. respective teams. So it's going to be an interesting thing to th- see how Weber fits in the Canadian system and stuff. See if he actually it makes him a little bit better, possibly because he was great down in Nashville. He's top top defenseman in Nashville, obviously. So Canadians could make it the playoffs. I like the Flyers, obviously, so I have them in. The personal bias wins this one, obviously. You'll see it in the. MLB stuff. My personal bias coming in there with the All Nationals, right. but uh, either way, <clears throat> yeah, because you know we're previewing stuff. We're mostly previewing stuff all this week, yeah, because yeah, we got NASCAR, hockey, baseball, football, and you know, yeah. WWE. You know, you got your Flyers. I got my Pens. The Pirates didn't make the playoffs, but you know, I got to root for you know some other teams and with the, you know some connections I have. Um, and if I don't, that's the reason why I have the Washington Capitals, uh, you know, making the playoffs in the East here for hockey, you know, since we're talking about it, you know, my aunt and uncle, uh, live down in the DC area and they're big hockey fans and big, uh, Washington Capital fans, uh, for that matter. So, 
you know, a little bias, bias there too, you know, for family, but, um, yeah, we'll have to see what you, uh, have to say about your nationals. You didn't tell me anything about that. Yeah. So we'll move on to the West now and the NHL <coughs> right. now we'll start in the Pacific. I have the Ducks, the Sharks and the Kings making it again. And I just want to preface that there's only one team that's different in this one for me, by the way, in the out West. Are you so. sure you didn't just get online and no. copy and then, you know, it's, uh, you, it's, it's hard. You and know. then I just switched out one team in the West there. No, it's just, it's kind of hard when I look at it. It's like all these teams are still good. They're honestly going to make it. It's true. That's what you're saying too. You know, most of these teams, you know, make the playoffs. It's hockey you know, and baseball, and I think, are the ones. Yeah. Because NBA, you have free agents moving all over the place. Yeah. Stars go away. Same, same thing with football too with free agents. And similar, then, yeah. Uh, similar, yeah, it's similar. And, uh, you know, that's what I was, you know, trying to say before I forgot, like, about the NFC South because it seems like it's just that division. And it was the NFC West there for a while when all four teams were, you know, down, in, bad, down yeah. in the dumps, you could say. But now the Seahawks have, you know, risen, you know, from that. They've won a Super Bowl, been yeah. to another, you know, lost on a controversial call. And then, you know... Uh, Jim Harbaugh, you know, getting run out of San Francisco. He was doing well up in Ann Arbor. Really like what he's doing. I'll say it week in and week out. I still have Michigan winning the 2016 17 college football uh, playoff national championship. And then Arizona, they were good there when they had Kurt Warner uh, in his later years. And they went down there, but then they got Carson Palmer and Bruce Arians came in and um, Bruce Arians came in and, you know, revitalized. Uh, uh, that squad, but uh, yeah, you know me. I like to get off topic, talk about other uh, stuff yeah. we're not actually talking about at the moment. Um, but um, it it all relates to um, you know, so it all it all it all circles around. It all relates uh, to one another, and um, yeah, you. We're talking about the Pacific, right? The Pacific. Yeah, so yes. we'll get back into hockey here before I uh, ramble on some more. Yeah, Pacific in the West. I have uh, Vancouver, uh, the Canucks, uh, San Jose uh, Sharks, who were in the Stanley Cup final last year uh, against the Pittsburgh Penguins. And then um, the LA Kings. Um, they're another one of those teams that they're up one year and they're down the next. Uh, but they're. LA is not a hockey, hockey town. You know, LA is, a, LA is Hollywood. You know, it's where all the celebs, all the stars are at. And, you know, maybe, really, they are maybe the face of the town, though, now. Because somewhat, somewhat, I guess you could say, because, you know, with Kobe retiring, yeah, you still have the Clippers, because the Lakers are down, you know. Well, of course, they have the most recent championships in L.A., obviously, as well, winning Stanley Cups. Yes, that too, that as well. So, they've actually become more popular now, yes. by winning Stanley Cups. That, that is so. true. Um you still have the Clippers, and then um, you got all your college teams. You got USC and UCLA, yeah. and then um, and then you got the LA Rams coming back from you know from yeah. St. Louis. So and who if, are and if they stay pretty good, then they're gonna attract attention themselves. Yes, and you know LA might be a NFL uh, city again as it used to be, uh, and then it turned in you know it's, it's always been a college football college football school college football town. Excuse me. Uh, but yeah, I think LA makes it in the Pacific. All right, out of the Central, I have the Blackhawks, the Blues, and the Stars making it. All right, in the Central, I have uh, CM Punk's uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, Carrie Underwood's husband Mike Fisher he plays for the National Predators. I have the National Predators, and then um, I think the Dallas Stars will make the playoffs uh, for the second year in a row. Uh, I would expect them to. They were the number one seed last year out west. Uh, as for the wild card, I have those Predators as one of the wild card teams, and in the one team that I don't that I switched out, I switched out the Wild for the Avalanche. Uh, the Avalanche have a lot of great young talent on their team that can only get better from as the years go by. So, all right, wild cards for me. I'm gonna have the St. Louis Blues, and um, speaking of the St. Louis Blues, and the next team I have as my uh, wild card team, it's uh, gonna be Winnipeg. Um, I'm from Winnipeg, you idiot, as Chris Jer- Jericho um, famously said on uh, a Monday Night Raw episode. It was Smackdown, num- actually. It was actually Smackdown? Okay. Uh, a number of years ago uh, to a fan. 
his dad actually played for those Blues back in the day. Um, so, Chris Jericho, if you're out there listening, we listen. I listen to talk to Jericho all the time. I don't know about Corey. Um, really. I listened to a lot of podcasts, um, and that's how I got the idea, too. If you didn't watch the Q&A, um, I don't even think I said it, you know, to do a podcast, you know, my own podcast with somebody, you know, that um, my own podcast I could share with, you know, somebody who, um, I'm trying to think of the right words here, to, uh, that knows, you know, sports as much as I do, uh, so, Yeah. Chris Jericho, if you're out there listening, we like Talk as Jericho. We love Talk as Jericho. Actually, loved the uh, yeah the second episode with uh, two former members of the Bullet Club, uh, Luke Gallows and uh, Machine Gun Carl Anderson. It was really funny. Um, Corey, you'll have to go check it out. Um, is that it for hockey? Do we have anything else? Do you well, have anything else to add? I know you're real into hockey more than I am. You're <clears throat> you're sport is hockey compared to my football. Well... Somewhat, I think. It's the Flyers more so than any yeah. of course. And by association with the Flyers, I know a little bit more about hockey because, like, the other, the teams that play the Flyers and stuff, like, I know stuff about them, obviously, because yeah. they're playing the Flyers and whatnot. It's more of a Flyers thing. Like, I'm not 100% like... Dialer. The best about hockey. Like, I, Well, I'm, you know more than me, though. So... Yes. I'm throwing myself underneath the bus, but I don't care. I would say football is one of the sports that I can talk a lot about, though, obviously. And we're sitting here, we've been sitting here for about three hours, and we just started recording back when we started talking about NASCAR there. And we are talking football here for you know, a while, and I don't know why yeah. we weren't recording, but... Uh, as long as it could just be football we if we wanted it to. Yeah, and, and, and uh, too, I think... Uh, the problem was, it was just football. When football's out of season, what do we do, you know? Yeah, it's hard. Um... And I think, I mean, we could tell them if you want to. What? Um, about what we're planning on doing. Our plan? Our, our plan at the moment as of, you know, October 5th, right now at, uh, you know, 1230 in the afternoon uh, when we record. So our plan right now is to, by the end of the year, we want to have stuff ready um, to, I don't know how to say it because we really haven't talked about how, talked about it a lot, how to, you know, promote it and, uh, you know, get it out to people. We're going to try, instead of doing one episode a week and having it being an hour, hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes long, we're going to do, depending on both of our schedules, two to three episodes a week and have them a half hour to 45 minutes Possibly an hour if we just, you know, feel like talking. Um, but, yeah, some breaking news from both of us here across the goal line. Um, we're going to be changing up before our, our format and uh, seeing if we can get some more views. Um, uh, so, if you're out there listening, let family, friends, uh, classmates, co-workers, uh, let those people know if we bring you... Uh, some of the best coverage of sports, um, you know, week in and week out. And we're going to try to do that more times throughout the week and just talk about a certain thing, you know, or a certain sport, uh, for that episode rather than having four to five things, you know, each week. Um, the other thing to add, I don't, I don't know if I missed anything. I mean, we'll have more updates whenever we find more stuff. When we find out more about it, how we're going to go. About yeah. It. We, it's we so early. We literally just thought about this, um, a little bit ago, so yeah. So going back to hockey now, or uh, yeah. actually, we're gonna yeah. move on from hockey. Well, okay. I uh, we'll, thought I thought you had something else to say. About uh, we hockey. will move on from hockey, go into the MLB postseason, which gets underway. It's gonna be a fun, long, exciting season there for hockey. Yes, it starts next week, October twelfth, and it's gonna run until you know June. Um, it's hard. It's hard to believe. You know, hockey starting as I said a little bit ago, and then. You know their season's going to be over already, and and then football season's going to be starting all over again next year, and you know we're only in October. It just it shows you how how fast time uh, does fly by. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, the MLB postseason we we'll move on to now got underway last night technically with the first of the wild card games, the AL wild card games. The Orioles went to Toronto to play the Blue Jays in that one, and the Blue Jays won in extra innings, eleven innings as Edwin Encarnacion hit a game-winning walk-off three-run home run. And now they'll have to play the Rangers in the ALDS 
And that begins on Thursday now because we have the second wild card game. The NL wild card game is tonight, Wednesday, as the Giants go to New York to play the Mets. As a great pitching matchup will be featured as Madison Bumgarner takes on Noah Syndergaard. Should be a really good game. Uh, I'll probably tune into it honestly. Uh, I actually. I don't really watch baseball unless it's playoffs pretty much. Yeah. It's one of those sports. Similar to uh, college basketball, I don't get super into it until March Madness. So that, that's how I am with um, hockey. You know, going yeah. back to hockey, I really don't watch it throughout the season unless there's a you know, a game on a Sunday when there's not a college basketball game on that I don't you know, I'm not watching or you know, something of that nature. That's when I'm tuning into hockey, but other than that I don't watch hockey until the playoffs start. Yeah. So that'll be a good game. We'll, we'll actually pick that game really quickly when we get into the NLDS. Yeah. But we'll start in the ALDS. I already mentioned one of those matchups. We'll start with it as the Rangers host the Blue Jays in the first of the ALDS matchups. I'm going to have the Rangers win this one. They are the best team out of the American League. They have the best win percentage uh, against clubs over 500 this year at like 6.653, like 65% of the time they win against teams that have a above 500 record. They're also one of the best teams when it's a close game. At home as well, you know how much I love home when we do our football picks, so I'll translate that into baseball now, too. I'll take the Rangers in that one. All right. Um, you know, going back, you said, you know, the ALDS and the AL, uh, you know, CS. Um, we've got a little visitor here. Um, we've got a cat uh, in studio with us at the moment. I'm not much of a cat person. I'm more of a dog person, but... Um, I do have uh, both of them at uh, home, so I can relate to that as well. Um, and this is just a little kitty cat, a little kitten. How old is he, Corey? Uh, four months next week. It'll be four months next week. Anyways, going back to what we were talking about, um, Corey said the uh, ALDS, the ALCS, the NLDS, the NLCS, um, you know, the DS stands for Divisional Series, and then the CS start, stands for Championship Series. And then you obviously know the World Series is the World Series. Um, you know, um, best thing to happen in October, really, other than, you know, watching football on weekends. Um, let's see here. What what else do I have right down here? Uh, for both uh, the ALCS and the NLCS, the higher seed will have home field advantage and get games one and two and six and seven if the series goes that long. But for the World Series, the AL is going to have home field after they uh, secured the win in this year's All-Star game, which was in San Diego, California. I think most baseball fans know what I'm talking about um, at the moment. Um, so, for example, in the AL, if the Indians beat the Red Sox and the Blue Jays beat the Rangers, the Indians are going to have home field for the ALCS, and they'll get games one, two, uh, six, and seven, as I said. Um, let's see here. I have a lot of stuff wrote down for baseball this week. Um, as Corey said, um, the ALDS starts tomorrow. Um, will be on, what station is it going to be on? It's yeah, going to be, be on TBS. Yeah, it's going to be on TBS. Like I said, I have so much stuff written down here. I don't and then know the where NL, I'm at. The NL stuff will be on the Fox Sports Fox, Network. Fox Sports 1. Or just Fox, of course. Um, but all the AL, AL stuff will be on TBS. All yes. the NL stuff will be on some sort of Fox Network. Yes. Uh, and as he said, they start you know tomorrow the 6th and the 7th, respectively, uh, for the AL and the NL. Uh, and we'll, they'll, they'll last until at least Sunday... Um, October 9th and Monday the 10th. Uh, if um, that's if the team sweeps, you know, 3 0. And uh, I'd like to note, too, the uh, divisional series are only five games. Um, so if the games do go five games, they'll last till October 12th and the 13th, respectively. Um, and I'll walk our game, which we uh, were talking about and I got off track. Uh, you said you might tune in. Uh, it's on ESPN. It's the only ESPN game for baseball the rest of the season. Um, as Corey said, yeah, the NLDS CS on Fox. It's been on Fox as long as I can remember. Um, 
And then the ALCS starts on Friday, October 14th, and the NLCS will start on Saturday, October 15th. They will run until the 23rd and 20, 22nd and 23rd, excuse me, respectively, if both of the series go seven games. More than likely going to happen, but I could be wrong. The World Series will start on Tuesday, October 25th, and run until Wednesday, November 2nd, if the series goes seven games as well. More than likely will. I could be wrong, though. These teams are the best of the best, so they're fighting for what every team uh, you know, sets their goals for at the beginning of spring training. Um, I think that's it. I don't think I need to say anything um, you know, more about that. Um, what game were we picking? As picking a, Jays Rangers. Yeah, yeah, Jays Rangers. Um, I'm going to have to go with uh, the Texas Rangers uh, in this series. It's a rematch of last year's uh, one half of the ALDS and what people you know remember from uh, Jose Batista's uh, bat flip uh, that sent the uh, Rogers Center rocking uh, all night long. But um, yeah, I'm going to have to go with the Rangers. You know me, and I've said it plenty of times before. I've said it plenty of times today. I like to, you know, get off topic and ramble, and that's what I just did. But it's all important information, you know, because what if uh, what if somebody uh, wants to know they don't have um, internet, but really, if they don't have internet, they want to be listening to us. That doesn't make any sense, um, and they wanted to see, you know when the games were and what channels they were on and stuff like that. And they didn't want to just look it up there, listen to us. Um, now they know because I just told them. Um, so yeah, it's important. Um, it's just how I talk. It's how I, uh, how I, uh, get stuff out there to people. So yeah. Um, Rangers will beat the Blue Jays All right. in, a, in a rematch. All right. All right, the other matchup is the Indians taking on the Red Sox. I'm going to take the Red Sox being at home. Also, it's continuation of David Ortiz's last hurrah. I think they put something together for him. I think I've been mentioning that a couple of times when we've been talking about the MLB previewing stuff. The At the halfway point at the beginning of the season when we did it, I think I talked about that, how David Ortiz's last ride essentially might be a catalyst for them doing well here. And I think I'll continue here in the playoffs. I'll take out the Indians, I think, in the NL or the ALDS rather. I'm also going to take the Boston Red Sox. I would really like to see the Cleveland Indians though um, uh, win, um, just because you really don't get to see the Indians in the in the um, playoffs, you know, that much. They're not like they used to be. Um, you know that. Uh, city of Cleveland, yeah, they finally got a championship with the Cavs, but um, but uh, other than that, that city hasn't seen any championships uh, in recent memory, especially when the Browns suck so bad. It's just, uh, it's just, uh, I don't even know what to say about Cleveland. I gotta, I gotta bash them every time I get the chance because I'm a Pittsburgh fan. So, except for Pitt, I'm a Penn State fan. So, um, I think everybody should know that by now. Eat shit, Pitt too. Um, yeah, Boston Red Sox. And two, I wanted to say, I have my stuff written down in the order you know I had it. Corey had it different, so that's why I was trying to, you know, go back and forth there and figure out, you know, what to say and you know when to say it, but uh, that's a little uh, mistake on my part. Um, NLDS now? Uh, we can, if or you want. I was going to go through else? the entire AL. Are first. you going to go through the entire AL? That's, we'll perfect. Go all the that's way up perfectly to, fine. Let's so do who's going to represent the AL in the World Series? Essentially, this is the ALCS matchup. And we both have the Rangers versus the Red Sox, so we'll just go off of that. Uh, I'm going to go Rangers in this one. I mentioned that they have been one of the best team, actually the best team against teams that are above 500, and that's all the playoffs are. I mean, the best of the best, and they've been being the best of the best all season, so plus they're one of the best teams at home also, which they'll have home field advantage throughout playoffs, including the World Series if they make it, of course, because of the All-Star game. Yeah, um, perfectly said there, Corey. Um, the Rangers will host uh, the Red Sox in the ALCS if this happens, um, with them being the higher seed. 
uh, and having the best league record. Um, same thing for the Chicago Cubs in the NL. Um, I went back and forth on this one, uh, to be honest. But I got to stick to my gut. Back at the end of March, early April, I picked the Boston Red Sox to represent the American League in the World Series. And I still stuck to my gut back in July when we previewed, we reviewed the first half of baseball, and then we previewed the second half if we wanted to change our minds. But um, I like to stick to my gut. Um, I'm, all, I'm normally right nine times out of ten when I do. So Boston Red Sox will uh, defeat the Texas Rangers. And as you said, it's David Ortiz's uh, last hurrah. Um, if they do win, people are going to say it's fixed. Obviously, it's happened how many times before in numerous sports. But uh, the Texas Rangers do have experience, though, um, you know, with the playoffs in the World Series. They went to back-to-back World Series a couple years ago. I think it was 2010-11 or 2011-12. Um, forget who they played. Do you remember who they played that year, Corey? Uh, at least the one time they played the Cardinals. They did. That's what, yeah. That's one. Uh, David Freeze yes. hit that. Yeah, okay, that's what it was. Might have been both times originally. If I, I don't remember. I know at least. Anyways, the, the Rangers have had uh, experience in recent years under different management now. Yes. Um, you know, Ron Washington's not the manager. Uh, so uh, I think they'll give the Red Sox a run for their money, but I think Boston gets it out. Gets, uh, gets the job done in the end. Um,. As much as I don't like Boston sports either, I mean, I hate Cleveland sports, but I hate uh, Boston sports more because of the Patriots and Tom Brady and, uh, you know, the flight gate and how they uh, have cheated a number of times. So, uh, as much as I don't want to, I got to go with Boston. All right, we move on to the NLDS, and we'll actually start. With, we'll start with the game that we actually know the series will be. It's going to be the Nationals taking on the Dodgers. Uh, <coughs> I'm going with the Nats, uh, my team. I can honestly see the Dodgers winning this one, though. No Stephen Strasburg for the Nationals; that'll hurt them a lot in their rotation. But they still got Scherzer and company there. Uh, offensively as well, Bryce he's been in, hampered with some injuries, and they got a lot of great offensive guys on that team. Uh, I think the Nats in a close one, but they have broken my heart a few times now. The last couple times they've been in the playoffs, losing in like game five of the NLDS or something like that in a very close game where they could have won. So we'll have to see if the Nationals can pull this one out and make it to the NLCS. But I'm going to take them for now with a personal bias on the Nationals. I just have wrote down uh, the Nationals over the Dodgers. Um, so I have the Nationals going the AL, I mean the NLCS, after they uh, defeat the LA Dodgers. I don't think the Dodgers have enough uh, enough uh, depth and enough. They Both teams have talent. Uh, I'll give them that, but I don't think the Dodgers have enough uh, depth. Um, That the you know Washington Nationals do have so, um, I'll agree with you. Just you know, and with you being a Nationals fan too. All right, and in the other matchup, first of all, we'll pick the NL Wild Card game between the Giants and the Mets, which is tonight. Yeah. And you know, if we get it right, we get it right. We get it wrong, we get it wrong. But you know, I mean, it's this, not going to matter that's, anyway. That's, that's the really me. the hard thing. It's not going to matter to me. You know, either I I told We're you both earlier, the Cubs. So. We are both picking the Cubs. Uh, but I would really like to have the winner of the wild card game tonight face um, the Dodgers or the Nationals, and then you know the Dodgers, or the Nationals face the Cubs in the NLDS, and then you get that Giants Cubs matchup in the NLCS uh, rather than the DS. Um, yeah, so I just gave my picks away. I have the Giants tonight, and then the Cubs. I don't know who you have tonight. I know you said you have the Cubs. I have the Giants tonight because okay. mostly because of Madison Bumgarner being on the bump. He's been just so great on not just on the road as well, but in the playoffs in general, he's just stone cold killer out there on the mound when playoffs start. So, 
And the even number year, of course, but they're going to run to a buzzsaw with the Cubs, I think. Stone Cold! Stone Cold! <laughs> uh, in the NLCS, then, we both have the Nationals. Jim Ross for you. We both have the Nationals take on the Cubs. Uh, I'm going to take the Cubs in that one. I think the Cubs are a little too strong for the Nationals right now. It depends on whether Nationals can get some guys back here off of the injuries uh, in the NLCS if they make it that far. But the Cubs, honestly, are just a little bit too strong for the Nationals at this point. So I'm going to have to go with the Cubs to make the World Series. Yeah, and the Cubs are probably a favorite right now when you say they haven't won a World Series since 1908. Yeah. It's 108 years. Yeah. Best record in baseball, of course. Yeah. So. Um, where are we at here on my notes? Um, yeah, so I have the Cubs hosting the Nats. Um, obviously, the best record, as you just said. I think your Nats are going to choke. I don't, you know... Uh, I, as I said, I think they have more depth than the Dodgers, so that's how they get to the NLCS. As you said, the Cubs, you know, are just all around, you know, good. Um, I think it's just going to be one of those plays. You know, it might be a Steve Bartman play. I don't know. Maybe he shows up and helps the Cubs this time <laughs> rather than uh, screw them. Um, or maybe a black cat runs out on the field and hurts the Nationals. <laughs> I don't know. We're going to have to find out. It's going to be a... Uh, Fun, exciting, uh, fun, exciting next you know couple weeks, next month. Um, but uh, I think the Cubs will uh, Cubs will reach the World Series and um, take on the Boston Red Sox in a matchup of uh, two of baseball's historic franchises. And um, do you want me to give me my pick now, or do you? Want yeah, to... you can go with your pick now if you want. All right. Um, and as I said, I like to stick to my gut. I also picked the Chicago Cubs back at the end of March, early April, when we first recorded our first episode of Cross the Goal Line. Be sure to go check that out as well. Uh, you might have to scroll down a while there. We were, This is episode 26 now. Um, but uh, as I said, I like to stick to my gut. I didn't change my pick with the Cubs either uh, back in July when we talked about the All-Star break. Um so at the beginning of the season, I said Cubs Red Sox World Series. Be- middle of the season, I said Cubs Red Sox World Series. Today, I say Cubs Red Sox World Series, and I believe I said Red Sox win. Maybe I said Cubs win. I can't remember. Um, but as of today, I think the Cubs will um, will win their first World Series since 1908. The city of Chicago um, will, they're going to go ballistic. I don't even know what to say. They'll, they'll go ballistic. They'll go crazy. Um, they'll be singing, um, you know, go, go Cubs Go and Sweet Home Chicago all night long. And if the Cubs win too, we got somebody who's going to be calling in, um, you know, to give their input. Um, I'm good friends with them. But if it doesn't happen, he's not going to be calling in, so I don't want to give any uh, information out right now. If the Cubs win, we'll have him on um, because he actually lives out in uh, Chicago right now and see what he has to say, what the city's like, you know, after, you know, before and after, you know, the World Series and, uh, you know, the little things like that. So I'll leave leave my predictions at that. Um, You know, Rangers over the Blue Jays, the Red Sox over the Indians, the Rangers, the Red Sox over the Rangers, excuse me, to go to the World Series, and then you know the Giants in tonight's wild card game um, over the Mets, and then uh, you know the Nationals over the Dodgers, and the Cubs over the Giants, and then you got the Cubs over the Nationals, uh, and then the Cubs over the Red Sox for the 2016 World Series. They won the first World Series since 1908. All right, my matchup is Rangers Cubs. And at the moment, I do have the Rangers actually winning the World Series, which is really? an interesting thing. Um, it's going to be a really close series if it is this. Uh, I've been mentioning the whole time that the Rangers have been so good against the best teams in the league and at home, which they will be at home. They have the home field advantage thanks to the All-Star game here. The AL won that. And, but the Cubs, they are going to be a tough beat for anybody. They have a great starting rotation. That's going to be just hard to get through with uh, Lester. Arietta, Hendricks, and Lackey, those those four guys, that's going to be hard to break through. But I think the Rangers, I'm going to give them a slight edge. I'm going to go to the American League here, and uh, I'm going to have to make Chicago suffer a little bit longer, I guess. So, uh, But nevertheless, 
So we're gonna take a quick we're gonna take a quick break here. Sorry, I got a cat all over me. Uh, uh, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we're gonna get into our football and also that WWE predictions. Do you like hunting, fishing, or talking about the outdoors? If so, you need to check out Downriver Outdoors, an outdoors channel on YouTube that brings you some of the best footage of hunting and fishing from the backwoods of Central PA. They also tell some great outdoors stories. Be sure to subscribe to Downriver Outdoors on YouTube. 